from getting punched to getting shot because real life isn't the same as online, here are seven times dumb influencers messed with the wrong people. Starting with possibly the most annoying creator in existence, Jack Doherty. His daredevil stunts and pranks, some of which are illegal, have had the police being called on him various times. For the remainder of your time, you need to put me forward. I think I'm allowed to record for my personal... Yeah, you're in my now, Jack's behavior during his streams grew increasingly disturbing with his move to Los Angeles, eventually leading him to getting involved in serious situations with his fellow influencers. One such example was his altercation with Fusi. In August 2023, Jack was streaming live with Fusi and Neon when Fusi decided to throw water at Jack for calling him a beta male. Yo, you're a The situation then escalated when Fusi swung back at Jack after he continued making comments. However, Jack's fans defended him a lot. Fusi is actually in the worst state I've ever seen him in, and he comes across as a nasty and disgusting person. The way he treated Jack was just crazy. But this wasn't the only time Jack's offhand comments have gotten him into trouble. Just a month later, Jack got involved in a heated argument with the Island Boys. As the argument escalated, one of the twins decided to slap Jack in front of the camera. This quickly became a pattern as he once again found himself on the receiving end of a slap, this time from a stranger who was allegedly offended by a t-shirt worn by his bodyguard. Go wa walk away. The irony of provoking and disrespecting someone while cowering behind security guards is out of this world. But that seems to be Jack's strategy, causing conflicts for his bodyguards to clean up, all for clout. Having a bodyguard to defend your battles after starting them is the most small man syndrome thing I can think of. And while Jack is at least aware that he's annoying and picks on weak targets, the same can't be said about Neon, who got reality checked much harder than just a slap. Neon first got the taste of clout for playing dumb on December 21st, 2019, when he uploaded a video titled, Neon is Dying. Two days later, on December 23rd, he published a video called Neon's Final Words. Another three days went by, and on December 26th, it was announced that Neon was gone. However, only five days later, on December 31st, he uploaded a video telling his fans that he survived, and that it only took two days for him to recover from his brain tumor and seizure. A lot of people made fun of him, making sarcastic comments such as, he came, he conquered, he died, he resurrected. Were you killed? Sadly, yes, but I lived. I'm so sad he died, but he's alive. This encouraged Neon even further, as in mid-2023, a video of him getting beat up surfaced. However, this time around, a lot of people knew about his spineless behavior and weren't taking things at face value anymore, believing the video was fake from the start. Bro, no one gets caught lacking in the middle of a field and gets their short ripped, but their glasses stay on. His shirt not even dirty, and they in dirt. Now, it's possible no one ever told Neon about the boy who cried wolf. You know, if you intentionally disrespect the wrong person, they'll give you a reality check, and rightfully so. Neon. Oh, why did I do that? Get on your hands and knees. Get on your hands you and knees. You Arabian psychopath. Take it, bro. Oh my. Oh my. All right, all right, all right. Oh my heart. Say sorry. But this wouldn't be the only time someone taught Neon a lesson. This just goes to show that when it comes to a fight, it's really not all about physical strength or being outnumbered. You either know how to actually fight, or you don't. There's also a chance that Neon's just a marketing genius being a decent actor in his live streams. But even when going over the top, he can't match the toxicity of Jerka, a creator so vile Twitch permanently banned him from appearing on their site. Jerka initially made a name for himself as a just chatting content creator on Twitch. However, he soon diverged to criticizing people such as Andrew Tate on both YouTube and Twitter. How many rounds? I'll no go. Fuck up that bald midget. How many rounds? I want to fight you. I'm taller, I'm stronger, and he's bald. These guys are pathetic, low life, no genuine burning desire from any of their women. While at the same time promoting even worse ideals on top of glorifying drug usage. I got money, so I get executive. That doesn't kill me. He also often talks about the Earth being flat and many other conspiracy theories. Remember, if the Earth's a globe, the Bible's not real. If the Earth had dinosaurs, the Bible's not real. Um, literally every angle is an attack on the Bible, right?
This stupidity would eventually make him start a beef with HS Tiki Talkie and popular streamer Aiden Ross, causing an outrage on social media by making derogatory comments regarding HS Tiki Talkie's mother, as well as Aiden Ross's former partner, Pammy. Jerka then took the rivalry to new heights when he suggested that he'll find HS Tiki Talkie and fight him on the streets. And he did just that. Oh, boys! 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 <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the only thing he managed to do is merely show his butt crack to the world and get embarrassed, making him out to be a laughing stock for everyone. Zerka is the literal definition of the loudest in the room is usually the weakest. Zerka has the agility of an armadillo and the balance of a toddler. Azurka may possibly be his own worst enemy, but the same can also be said about Sneeko, whose recent stunt had him hit much worse. This guy, who first got famous for his video, Would You Say the N-Word for a Dollar?, eventually started becoming extremely disliked by left-wing viewers due to his supposed misogynistic, homophobic, and transphobic content. Oh. They can ask us what we do. First question when you go on a date, what do you do? They're just asking how much money do you make, but you shouldn't ask a woman her age. Why? Why? Let me see the stats. What's your body count? How old are you? How much you weigh? Tell me. As Sneeko went on to upload social political commentary and hot takes, his ideals led him into situations that quickly developed into beefs. One such instance was in May 2022, where Sneeko responded to Penguin Zero's video live. Look, like, you look, look at the curtain pulled all the way down. You need to get some sun. The whole way you're living life like a f***ing a man, you calling him a virgin, you are literally a man child. Now this did not go down well with Penguin Zero, who later uploaded a video titled, I didn't want to talk about this, calling out Sneeko for making fun of his girlfriend, as well as criticizing him for defending the movie Cuties. The thing about Cuties is it's not an unrealistic film. Like yes, it shows children in a sexual way, but this is not unusual now. Claiming children in sexual positions is clickbait. Yikes. Sneeko responded to this on a rumble stream where Penguin Zero was also live at the time. The two would then continue to trash talk each other back and forth, eventually making Sneeko threaten Penguin Zero with a gun. Watch my clips! Watch my clips! However, Penguin Zero then silenced gun? Sneeko. But he's a f imbecile, you absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're mags, not clips, you absolute the same way that this is also a mag. They're all mad. Now this time, the only damage Sneeko suffered was emotional, but that would change not even a year later. In February 2024, he got his toughness checked again as he stepped into the ring with Sean Strickland. This made the internet very happy. This is the kind of reality check these out-of-touch streamers need. Sean went from 10% to 50% and showed Sneeko what a good old ass whooping feels like. Strickland should do a beat up an influencer weekly podcast. Hell, I'd watch that. However, despite being destroyed by Sean, Sneeko did have the confidence to step into the ring and take it on the chin, literally. The same thing cannot be said about this next influencer. Aiden Platersky, labeled the Crypto King, owned a crypto kingdom that seemed to be a win-win for everyone. He promised millions for his investors, while he got to drive his fancy cars, fly in private jets, and live in luxury locations. However, as it soon turned out, his $40 million empire was nothing but a giant Ponzi scheme, and he was about to learn the price of being a scammer. Late one night in early December, Aiden was kidnapped, and then beaten and tortured over three days. Eventually, his kidnappers, which included one of his investors, let him go, but they left him with a threat, pay up fast and don't go to the police. Well, Toronto police officers still managed to apprehend all of the five kidnappers. Following this, Aiden went on to post a video trying to garner sympathy from his followers. Everything that happened is my fault. I'm not going to put the blame on anybody else. I'm not going to try to put the blame on anybody else. I feel humiliated. I feel disgusted in my actions. I feel disgusted in what I did but people would see through his haphazard apology. He's apologizing because he got caught and got his ass whipped, not because he's sorry he scammed people. Zero sympathy. While his kidnappers would all be charged with the crime, the only person not charged would be Aiden, the scammer who started the whole situation to begin with. 
I really don't understand how people like Aiden can simply walk free. If I walk into my local supermarket, push the lady at the till, and grab a couple of bucks and walk off, I would be in handcuffs before the sun sets. He steals millions, admits as much, and no real consequences. Well, until now. But what if getting beat up wasn't the worst injury you could sustain? Tanner Cook, a 21-year-old prankster, is the mastermind behind the YouTube channel Classified Goons. As the name suggests, the pranks are classified as dangerous, making Tanner out to be a tough goon, someone who isn't meant to be messed with, when in fact, it's quite the opposite. While Tanner elicits responses from the victims of his pranks for views, one day, he didn't get the response he expected. Invading someone's personal space and then refusing to leave them alone after they tell you numerous times leaves you with one option. You're gonna get dealt with by a person who has been pushed too much. Lesson to dummies, do not prank random people or they will prank you. Never underestimate the public. Tanner, who is much bigger and more intimidating to the shooter, was taught a masterclass in F around and find out. And yet, he still didn't learn his lesson, continuing to upload videos like nothing happened. So you'll continue to make videos? Yeah, probably. We'll see, you know? How disappointed are you about this? So I really don't care. Way. I mean, it is what it is. It's God's plan at the end of the day, so. Tanner was lucky to make it out despite getting shot. This is something that Timothy Wilkes did not get to experience. Inspired by other pranksters he'd seen, Timothy began dreaming of creating his own YouTube channel, recreating some of the dangerous pranks other YouTubers had done before him. However, this dream got cut short in February 2021 when Timothy, along with a friend, were in the midst of filming a prank robbery as part of a YouTube video. Armed with butcher knives, they approached a group of people. Unaware of the robbery being a prank, one of those group members shot Timothy in self-defense. Now in the end, Timothy did get the clout he wanted, but just for the wrong reasons. 